Hello and welcome everyone to a third presentation on interpretation of CT scan of the lung. Today's topic is increased lung attenuation. The normal lung density on CT is slightly higher than that of air and determined by the balance between the air in the air spaces and in the small airways in one hand and the soft tissue structures that have higher density than that of air but are as such not individually visible on a CT scan in the other hand. Now what are these soft tissue structures? These are the interstitial lung tissue, the wall of the alveoli and the small airways. Also the capillaries and the blood in these capillaries. So apart from the air, these small tissue structures which are not normally visible in a CT scan also affect the density of the lungs. The density of the lungs is dependent on the blood that is being perfused, the airways and the soft tissues. If the density is increasing, it means that the perfusion to that place has increased or there is a reduction in the air or the, there is some thickening in the interstitium. So there are three types of increased lung attenuation patterns. What are these? These are first is the ground glassing, second is consolidation and the third one is increased lung attenuation greater than the soft tissue density. We will come to these one by one, the first being ground glass opacity. Ground glass opacity is defined as a hazy increase in the lung density with preservation of airway and vessel margins. The ground gas opacity may be diffuse and can even involve the whole lung to an equal degree. Normally, the density difference between the lung parenchyma and the air in the trachea and the mainstream bronchus is minimal and an increase in the density difference should alert an observer that the disease process is diffuse and involves whole of the lungs. But fortunately, these type of events are rare and most of the time what we get is a picture like this where you will find patchy ground glassing rather than a diffuse ground glassing. So this is how a ground glassing looks like where you will find the vessels and the airways visible even though there is increase in attenuation. If you look at this CT scan, it will look as if that it is a normal CT scan. But what is with this particular CT scan is it is a diffuse ground glassing. To compare a diffuse ground glassing, you have to compare the lungs with that of the air in the trachea. So if you compare these two places, you will find that there is a increased in the attenuation in the lungs compared to the trachea. So this is more indicative of a diffuse disease. Now ground glassing caused by reduction of air in the air spaces. This is because of volume loss. This can usually occur in expiration which is physiological, in the dependent areas of the lungs which is again physiological and finally the volume loss in the alveoli may be because of a result of pathological changes in the lung and parenchyma where the lungs is unable to expand fully because of some pathology in the lungs and parenchyma resulting in reduced air in the air spaces. Fibrotic scarring in the lungs and pleural thickening can be a cause of this. Here you can see there is a pathology in the pleura which is preventing the lungs from fully opening up. So if you compare both the lungs, there is an increased attenuation in this part of the lungs, which means that this particular lung is unable to expand fully and there is a reduction in the air in the air spaces. That is the reason why you have this diffuse ground glassing throughout. Next is replacement of the alveolar air. This is more common which is it can be replaced with fluids that is in pulmonary edema or cells that is in infections or finally other materials. Something like this which is alveolar proteinosis. Here you find that there is diffuse infiltrations throughout the lungs bilaterally and since you can see the vessels this is ground glassing. And you can also find there is thickening of the interlobular septas. Now ground glassing can be caused by an increase in parenchymal perfusion. This is very important. This was also highlighted in the second presentation. Here what you see is 
this is an area of increased attenuation while this is appears to be a normal attenuation these areas are appearing to be normal while these are having ground glassing but actually the pathology is lying in the areas that are apparently normal these areas are having increased perfusion the areas which you are seeing as ground glassing with increased attenuation these are areas with increased perfusion there is a mosaic pattern of perfusion while some areas are not getting the blood some areas are getting adequate blood and slightly more blood because these areas the vessels are collapsed this is commonly seen in chronic pulmonary embolism where small embolus go on and block the arteries so here you can see there is a difference between the caliber of the arteries this artery is very very small while this one is pretty large so this is the reason there is a differential perfusion and there is a mosaic pattern in the perfusion and the pathology here lies in the areas which are apparently appearing to be normal. Now to interpret a ground glass appearance you need to have proper history of the patient. So acute versus subacute or chronic disease is extremely important. So to know the history of the patient is extremely vital only then you can give a proper interpretation to this particular patient now say the patient has an acute onset then the most likely causes for ground glassing are pulmonary infection b bacterial but more commonly it is viral pneumocystis gerovisi or mycoplasma pulmonary edema pulmonary hemorrhage ards acute interstitial pneumonia eosinophilic pneumonia acute radiation pneumonia acute all of this can have a ground glassing appearance pattern in subacute or chronic history hypersensitive pneumonitis smoking related lung diseases usual interstitial pneumonia non-specific interstitial pneumonia alveolar proteinosis lymphocystic interstitial pneumonia asbestosis vasculitis and other diseases these are a more chronic course and these predominantly present as ground glassing now next is crazy paving pattern superimposition of a linear pattern on ground glass opacity results in a pattern that is called crazy paving so this is how the a crazy paving looks like you have diffuse ground glassing throughout the lungs but it is also associated with thickening of the interlobular septas so the appearance that you get is that of a crazy paving like a pavement has been made with this kind of a pattern in this particular thing apart from the history the other thing that we need to see is that there is a if you look at the bronchus they are pretty normal the walls are very very normal which means that this is more of an acute disease while in this you can see that there is scarring of the bronchus so this is suggestive of fibrosis so this is something which can help you in differentiating between uh, acute versus a subacute or chronic disease process apart from the history part now the differential diagnosis for acute crazy paving is pulmonary edema primary infections pulmonary hemorrhage acute interstitial pneumonia ards and others in subacute it is more of usual interstitial pattern non-specific interstitial pattern alveolar proteinosis organizing pneumonia vasculitis and others now the next important lung attenuation is lung consolidation it is defined as an increase in lung density with the obscuring underlying vessels although the bronchial walls are also obstructed the bronchi can often be recognized as an air bronchogram here you can see patchy consolidation here you can see that there is no visibility of any vessels underneath these spaces so this is an area of consolidation this is an area of consolidation if you compare it this is some an area where you can see some ground glassing you can see that the vessels are still visible in the background the other thing to be noted is the bronchus can be seen over here though the wall is obscured the lumen is visible which gives the appearance and is called as a air bronchogram the causes of consolidation the acute ones are pulmonary infection predominantly bacterial pulmonary edema pulmonary hemorrhage ards acute interstitial pneumonia almost similar to that of ground glassing subacute chronic 
is organizing pneumonia, bronchial alveolar carcinoma, lymphoma, more oncological causes here, eosinophilic pneumonia, vasculitis, and since the interstitial pneumonia pattern is more associated with ground glassing uip and nsip is seen here down below because consolidation is very very rare in these particular cases you mostly see diffuse ground glassing rather than consolidation but then consolidation can still be seen in this now coming to the third part that is the increased lung attenuation greater than the soft tissue density now the most frequent cause of increased attenuation is multifocal lung calcification these multifocal lung calcifications can be mostly because of granulomatous diseases like tuberculosis, silicosis, sarcoidosis and amyloidosis. Apart from that, you can have metastatic calcification, alveolar microlithiasis and finally because of amiodarone which gets deposited and produces an increased attenuation. Now here is a diffuse haziness which is because of malignant calcifications. Here you can see that there is increased attenuation. This pattern is typical of calcification. Now, after we have seen the appearance, the next thing to know the differential and which will help us in finding out our cause could be the distribution. Coming first to the distribution in ground glass. If it is centrilobular, it is more likely to be a hypersensitive pneumonitis, organizing pneumonia, pulmonary infection, predominantly viral, pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage because these are the areas which will be most likely getting affected because of the centrilobular distribution. If it is subplural, it is more likely to be UIP pattern eosinophilic pneumonia, organizing pneumonia, asbestosis and since COVID is now going on, COVID is one of the causes where you find predominantly subplural affection. Now if it is patchy, it is mostly non-specific interstitial pneumonia, disquamative interstitial pneumonia, hypersensitive pneumonitis, alveolar proteinosis. Finally, if you find a diffuse or extensive without any proper pattern, it is because of hypersensitive pneumonia, smoking related or NSIP. Then coming to the distribution in consolidation. Similar to that of ground glassing, here you will find hypersensitive pneumonia, organizing pneumonia mostly for the centrilobular nodular appearance with bronchioalveolar carcinoma and aspiration being the other causes. Subplural is most importantly seen in eosinophilic pneumonia, organizing pneumonia. Here, UIP pattern may at times present as consolidation also. Patchy is again predominantly non-specific interstitial pneumonia. Diffuse is because of hypersensitivity, non-specific pulmonary infection, mainly bacterial or edema or hemorrhage. In consolidation, you can at times find low bar patterns, that is a full lobe is affected. This is most common in low bar pneumonias, like pulmonary bacterial infections. Also very common with bronchioalveolar carcinoma. Finally, organizing pneumonia and lymphoma could be other causes of only one lobe getting affected, a typical low bar presentation. Now coming to regional distribution, upper lung versus lower lung. Upper lung is mostly affected in sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia. The lower ones are mostly affected with edema, UIP pattern, asbestosis, non-specific interstitial pneumonia, lipoid pneumonia, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. A diffuse pattern is again suggestive of hypersensitive pneumonitis. Central lung versus peripheral lung. Central is predominantly sarcoidosis, lymphangetic spread of tumors and alveolar proteinosis. Peripheral again, just like subplural, it is mostly a UIP pattern. Posterior versus anterior. As we most of us are aware, posterior appearance is mostly commonly seen with alveolar edema and ARDS. Finally, 
it can be either unilateral or totally asymmetrical these are most common in pneumonias so this is the final flow chart for how you approach these things if you find increased lung attenuation then you look for whether the bronchiovascular markings are preserved or they are obscured if it is preserved then we are looking for ground glass if it is obscured then what we are looking at is a consolidation but most of the times you will find a combined pattern the next thing that you need to note is the history of the patient whether it is an acute presentation or a subacute or chronic presentation based on that you will have your differentials the next thing that you look for is whether you have especially if you are having ground glassing whether you are having any linear patterns that is the thickening of the interlobular septas giving you a crazy paving appearance so once you have your appearances the next you look at the distribution whether it is centrilobular whether it is subpleural whether it is patchy diffuse or lobar based on that you will find your differential diagnosis as we have shown thank you for your patience and check our website for further information